Hey guys, Denis Kozhar here. In this video I want to speak about everything I wish they had taught me in school or university. Now I'm producing this video because there is a clear lack of knowledge about how to freelance. Schools and online courses are doing a really bad job in general of educational their students on how to actually to sell yourself, how to market. And I have found it all too common that people complain to me that there are schools are simply not teaching them any of the business of marketing aspects of art. They teach them in art and design aspects of things, but neither the business side of things. So it's my goal with this video to help educate some of those people that were lost in those gaps in art school. To help those people that would love to freelance and would love to make a living with it but simply don't know how. So the part one is where we getting started. Is going to cover the very basics from what freelancing is, what are the main steps to begin with, how should your portfolio look like and so on. First of all, let's define what freelancing is. What does it mean to be a freelancer? A simple definition is that you're self-employed and in our case creative individual. And rather than working at studio and have a common day job, where you go there five days a week, the same place, work with the same company every day, you work typically from home and you work for a number of different clients. Freelancing is actually an interesting topic. You'll find if you start telling people that you're a freelancer, they will immediately assume that you're unemployed and this is perfectly normal. Now, once you get past those stigma of being a freelancer is that people lazy bum, you get to the dream of being a freelancer. The one where everyone working their 9 to 5 job is extremely jealous of you. And we're going to call this the ideal freelancing life. What people think? People think is that you make your own hours, you work whenever you want, which is often a couple hours a day, maybe. And sometimes that people think you work for whoever you want. You pick your times, you get to pick and choose your jobs. You have so many jobs coming in, of course, that you can only pick the best. You work wherever you want. If you feel like working at a coffee shop one day, you can go there. If you feel like working in bed one day, you can go ahead and work there. Next, you make more money clearly, cause you're self-employed and all the money goes directly to you and not the company. You were making tons of money and lastly and in general it's the fact that you have absolute freedom. Freedom does sit around in your pyjamas, working all day or not working at all. You know, the freedom to come and go as you please, have the freedom to work or not work as you please, take vacations whenever you want, hang out with friends, live the ideal artistic life. And it's all a great dream, but as you might expect, that's not entirely what it is like. I will say it is pretty awesome, but it's far from perfect. The reality is that yes, I do make my own hours, but those hours are often longer and sometimes worse than if I was working a 9 to 5 job as a friend. Since you got a type that long and the case was studio you will probably wouldn't have to deal with that that wouldn't be your problem it would be the company problem when you're on your own it's, it's entirely up to you if you have deadlines to meet you are the one responsible so if you have to work till midnight one night you have to work till midnight one night and if you have to work till 4 a.m that night you will have to work till 4 a.m i think if you ask most freelancers they would say that they work many more hours than their typical nine to five friends but even though the hours are long and sometimes miserable I do get to pick up when they are. 
which is extremely useful and one of those advantages the freelancers have, which he can never imitate in a typical 9 to 5 job. And see if someone call me up tomorrow and say they wanted to hang out and do something fun, I would be able to say yes. I would be able to take the time off and work some other time tours tonight. If I had a deadline, I wouldn't do that, but if I had a little advanced notice, I could easily take any day off that I wanted. A couple of days or maybe a week off if I killed myself doing work the week before. It's certainly true that at some point, once you're really, really, really good, very established and extremely well known, that yes, you do get to be very picky about the work that you take on. But I think it's fair to say that for at least the first few years you will have some very boring jobs that you will have to take on to support yourself. Yes, I can actually work whatever I want. And this one is pretty actually true. You can really work wherever you can to find a reliable internet connection. Money? Yes, it's true, you can make more money. That's certainly possible. You have the ability, but it's also true that you can make a lot less and it's extremely true that your income will be very unsteady. Most people get a paycheck every week or every month. When you're a freelancer, sometimes you will not get any income for a month or more. And it's kind of a scary way to life. A lot of people can take the stress of such a variable income. Another factor, people seem to forget that freelancers have a lot of unique costs that people working in a company don't have. Because the company takes care of all those common things like insurance, things like overhead supplies, all the equipment, all the software, all that being paid by the company. When you're on your own, is all the freelancer's responsibility. So the present amount of money actually does not end up in the freelancer's hand to the end of the day. It's true, the freelancer's life is not exactly perfect, but it's pretty sweet. I'll be honest with you, I really, really love freelancing. The fact that I can come and go as I please, the fact that I do make my own hours, fact I could take days off and just the fact that you feel in control. With a company, you are not exactly in control. You want part of the company. With a freelancer, you are everything. I will say that freelancer can be very scary. It is very unsettling for a lot of people. There is a lot of worse to it, but there is also a lot of reward. And it's very fulfilling lifestyle. One that I have enjoyed greatly and hope in some small way that I can help you on your own personal journey towards freelancing. So steps to freelancing. Let's get right to it by bringing down freelancing into very simple steps. It's not very difficult to become a freelancer. And the two simple steps are first you make a great work. Secondly, you show it to people who commissioned that kind of work. It's really, really simple as that. Naturally, that's easier to say than done. But it's important to, to remember those two st simple steps, because that's what you are shooting for. Step one of making great, awesome work is not really what we are going to be talking about in this video. There are plenty of videos and tutorials on my YouTube channel, or if you want more advanced, you can check out my Patreon community, you can find link in the description. If you don't have awesome work yet, you can still get a lot out of this video, because you're going to get a better idea by watching this of the things that you're going to be preparing for, why you're doing all this work. Step two is where we're going to be spending most of our time today and in the next parts of this video. It's all about getting your work in front of the right people. Freelancing really is extremely difficult to do making money and making a living as a creative person. I don't work 
to depress you guys or scare you but it's good to be a little bit scared because it's good to realize that this is not an easy field to get into. I think it comes down to working very hard, do persisting and sticking with it for a long time and then getting a little bit lucky never really hurt anybody while you're working on becoming a freelancer. While you're developing your skills, while you're doing everything that we're going to talk about today, while you're making yourself building your portfolio, it's very important not to be discouraged, because it's often a very slow process to become a freelancer. In fact, I've heard many people say that it takes anywhere from 5 to 10 years before you really established as an artist. And that's after you already somewhat professional quality of work, it's a very slow process. So take your time, don't rush it, don't think that you need to be a professional full-time working with the best lines next week, but rather plan out for a long-term plan on for what you're going to be doing for the next several years. It's really easy to look at the professionals out there now and you see how successful they are and how well they are doing. But you have to realize that most of them had a very long road to get where they are today. Most of them didn't just wake up one day and think I'm going to be a super awesome professional today. Most of them went through years and years of getting there, developing their skills, developing their brand, marketing themselves, getting known, building their client list. It's option of a very long process even for those people that make it look so easy. Even those days people make it look easy often if you actually sit down with some of them and talk to them about it they will tell you just how hard it was how they had difficulty paying rent when they first started out isn't this just selling out a lot of people when they are talking about freelancing is the worried that they are going to be selling out there, worried that they are going to be sacrificing all their creativity and all their express for some commercial gain. If you would like to remain pure like to remain purity or artistic intent and your own personal creativity, you are more than welcome to do that. But I cannot guarantee that you will not starve. Just look back at the all old masters and you will find that most of them work for patrons or they work for the church or someone with a lot of money who is willing to pay them to create a commissioned piece. Next question, am I too old? Am I too old to start? And people asking this will vary wide range. I have even seen people that were 15 years old asking if they were too old to start learning art or to start too old learning design and of course there is people in their 50s asking am I too old and there is very very simple answer to this question and that is probably not. I will say that no client I've ever worked for have ever asked me how old or young I was. So really it doesn't matter in the freelance industry how old are you are. Clients really just don't care how old are you, where you are or anything like that, as long as you can do the work and communicate clearly. So if you really want to be an artist or you really want to be a designer, don't worry about it, go for it. It doesn't matter how old are you, you might start a little later than someone else, but that really doesn't matter. You can still be extremely successful. Now the next question that I get asked all the time is should I go to art school, should I get a degree? Response to this is usually you will never ever get work from your degree. Never is going to happen. Your work is totally going to come from your own portfolio from the portfolio you develop, from the work you put into it. It's going to help you a lot to teach you faster than you can probably teach yourself, but in the end 
whatever you are at art school or not is really their personal decision it depends a lot on who you are as a person you really need to just figure out what is the best way for you to get the training you need i have seen plenty of artists and designers that were self-taught they are doing extremely well that piece of paper you hang on on the wall is not going to get you a job it's all in the portfolio an issue a lot of young artists and designers have they don't know when they ready to actually start working there is such a thing as starting too early there is a danger if you start too early that you're going to be starting at the very bottom you're going to start with some extremely amateur work and that work is going to get out there it's going to get seen and your name attached all that stuff and so you are going to start to build its reputation as low tier artist or designer and that can be extremely hard to break out of a certain price from you and they're going to refer you to other clients who will expect the exact thing so rather than get into that it's best to start a little bit higher level i will say that it's good to break into the industry when you are around the middle to upper level tiers you don't want to start too low but you also don't want to wait forever start getting work as soon as you can is not the best decision just because you're doing 10 bucks drawings for devon art it doesn't not mean that you're a freelancer and if you're doing some pretty logo for 20 bucks you're just doing somebody's logo for 20 bucks it doesn't really solidify your position as a real designer there so compare 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 the best way to know when you're ready is to compare yourself compare it is the ultimate way to figure out if you're ready for the industry if your work is up to that level that is professional and where you go about doing this extremely simple you take a selection of your work and you take a selection of professional work you take it from whatever industry you're in and you put them all side by side and see if your work fits in see if it blends or does it stick out is there something that your work is missing some people have difficulty of seeing their own work objectively they are too attached to it is their own little baby but you don't need to start developing that skill it's extremely useful when you're an artist or designer you need to know where your work stands but if you really can't see your work objectively and you really don't have any idea where it at then you can always ask a professional get a portfolio review get somebody who's in the industry who knows what they're talking about to take a look at your work and give you some input just whatever it's right or not for the industry just with where whatever you're up to that level or not research what do i mean by that i mean research the field you want to go into so many people that graduated from school or training themselves to be an artist want to be an artist but they have absolutely no idea how they're going to be they just have this mysterious idea that once they get good enough once they get all the skills to become an artist that they magically be able to make money somehow but this is not really going to happen because you need to find people that will pay you for your work to make if you want to be a freelancer and this is really the time when you just starting out to create your own unique field your own unique job the shortest way to do that is to start researching the field you want to go into and start researching the sort of jobs there are in that field you need to have understanding of who the big players in the industry are not only the great designers are which is very important but also what the big companies are and i will say that one of the best ways to get this information is either on forums or on blogs industry professionals are all over this place internet has been a wonderful resource for the creative industries search online and find out what the big forums are the big communities that you want to get into what do you do if you can't seem to get work you do all these things i'm about to tell you about the portfolio building and marketing and you just can't seem to get work 
Very simple answer is this, and it's one that most people just don't want to hear. If you can't get work, then your work needs to improve. Now I will say there is in the case, then perhaps your work is fine, but it's your marketing skills that are lacking. And we'll work on that later in this video. But if your marketing seems fine, it really just that God does come down to your work and you need to improve your work. Try to ask professionals, take a look at your work and get their advice. Get their input, find out those things that you really need to improve on. If you think you're at professional level and you're just not quite getting that work, then you're probably less than a year away from getting full-time work. Portfolio building. Portfolio building is without a doubt one of the most important things I'm going to talk about today. It's absolutely crucial no matter what sort of creative professional you want to be. The work you get is going to be because of your portfolio. It's not going to be because of your degree, not going to be because of any connections you might have. It's going to be on the work that you can do, on what you can produce and what portfolio is going to show that. Niche or diversify. The first thing we are going to talk about today with regards to your portfolio is whether you should get one specific niche or you should try to be a jack of all trades. And there are good arguments for either side. On the side of being a jack of all trades and diversifying yourself and having a lot of different skill sets is the fact that you can get a lot of different kind of work. Clients can hire you to do a lot of different things and since you are getting so many different kind of work, theoretically you are going to have an easier time maintaining a steady workflow. But on the downside, you are getting to have a hard time becoming known for any one particular thing. You are going to be so good at so many different things that you are not going to have that one specific thing that people will know you for. So it's easy to be in a lot more memorable if you have a niche. And so I personally advocate finding a niche for yourself. The advantage to filling a niche is that you are going to easily become known for very specific thing. Clients are going to come to you for that, so it's easy to become that one guy that you go to. Next thing you need to focus on is finding out who you want work for. Who is your ideal client? You need to focus on what those businesses look like. What's that person going to be hiring you? What are their goals? What are their ambitions? What do they want from you? And then you're going to find out how exactly to market to them. So do a little bit of research and find out what are the demographic looks like that you're going to be aiming at. Once you have nailed down this ideal client, you know what you're aiming for with your portfolio and you can start developing a portfolio that matches what they're looking for. Target your portfolio. I want to say that you're looking to target your portfolio, that's when you're looking what to do. You're not looking to just target everyone. If you target everyone, you likely not get any work at all. You need to focus in and find exactly who it is you want to work for. Exactly the little field that you want to get work from. And once you find out that nature, once you start targeting all of your work towards that, you can have a lot easier time becoming a freelancer. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I see people just try to do everything at once. They try to be a graphic designer, they try to be a web designer, they try to be an illustrator, try to be a photographer, and I think by spreading their self out so far and trying to market everything, that's where we're going not to do well. What to put in your portfolio? Let's get down to some of the specifics of what to include and what not to include in your actual portfolio the first time. The first thing I am going to talk about is what not to include. You should never have anything that looks like a school assignment. And the reason for that is that going to scream to every art director you show that you are not professional, that you are just a student. And that is not the image you want to be betraying the people 
are going to hire you. You want to look as professionals you can even if you are a student. You don't want to look like a student and this is a mistake that I see it all the time and that's the reason I mentioned it right off the bat. But let's get to more general tips of what you should be showing off in your portfolio. Show the work that you want to do. The most important piece of advice I can give you on the portfolio is show the kind of work you want to do. Don't show necessarily what your best work is. If you are great at doing interiors, for instance, but you actually want to do exteriors, if all you do show is interiors, then all the work that you are getting will be interiors. If you want to do exteriors, show exteriors. You only want to include your absolute best work. This is the place where you show your prime examples of how well you can do. This is not your sketchbook. This is not a place for everything you ever done. This is not the place to show your progression for your career. This is the place to show at a really, really small selection of your absolute best work. It's often said about art directors that they will always judge you by your worst piece. They're not going to judge you by your best piece in there. They're not going to judge you by the average of it. They're going to judge you by the worst piece. Because in their minds your worst piece is what you're going to make up for them on a bad day. And they need to know that on a bad day, if that's work you will get in from you, that they're going to be okay with that. And if your worst is good enough for them, they're probably going to give you work. If only your best pieces are good enough for them, they probably won't hire you. So really try to weed out those bad. Because they're going to really bring you down, even if you get some really stellar ones in there. A thing for you to do is to look what is out there. Looking at all the good portfolios of the really high-end professionals that are in the industry working right now. I mentioned earlier research and here it comes to play again. You need to do a lot of research and check out a lot of different work. You need to get a feel for what the standard is and whatever industry you're in. Check out some of the big players. See how they put in together their portfolios. See how much work they are putting in there and try to mimic how they are putting that together. Selecting pieces for your portfolio is something you're going to do and dealing with your entire freelancing career. And it's often a very personal decision. I found if you ask 10 different artists what you should put into your portfolio and all going to come back with different pieces. You really need to find out what you want to put in there by yourself. If everyone is telling you, man, that one piece is awful, take it out. Branding. All right, let's talk about branding for a little while. Now the first thing you need to realize is that you are not you are the brand. You as individual are the brand, not a big company, not an organization. You yourself as a person are your brand. And probably the first thing you need to settle on is to call yourself. Which is a bit of an odd thing to think about. But in general, you need to have pretty easy name to say. When you introduce yourself and somebody gets your name, if they can just go online and Google your name and be able to spell it well the first time, that is going to help you so much. Now I'm not saying that you should go out and change your name now to something more easily recognizable. But if you do have in like the insanely difficult name that's really hard to spell, really hard to pronounce, I'm not necessarily saying that's a bad idea to find something more easy to pronounce. I would recommend every artist, every designer to start using their real name on all the sites. That whatever you're spelling with initials or whether you're using your full name or whether you're shortening one of your names, you want to be using your real name for your all accounts on every site. I recommend anyone to do this right now. Now we are not in 19s anymore 
and we are not teenagers anymore. So you don't have any excuse to use your cool username as whatever your favorite musician is or your favorite video game is. For this now is the time to have a professional looking name. And the absolute easiest way to do that is to use your real name. And there are several advantages to use your real name. First, of course, just being that you look more professional. You seem professional if you're willing to put out your real name so everyone can see it. And secondly, it will make you easier to find out if people can Google your name and find all your different sites. Hopefully, you'll be able to get your own domain name it's going to be your central portfolio. It's where you're going to tell everyone to go. Now let's talk about logos. Logos are not entirely necessarily for an artist or designer, but they don't hurt. A lot of artists and designers will enjoy making logos, having a really good time. If you don't really know how or you're not sure you can make a really good one, don't worry too much about it. And the reason I say that is that honestly most people don't really recognize logo. Name is more recognizable. Your portfolio website. All right. Your portfolio website is the center of your freelancing universe. This is where everyone going to see your work. This is where you're going to get hired from. It's all about the work that you put on it. But it doesn't hurt if the website itself is actually kind of nice. Now I don't necessarily mean that the web design itself need to be gorgeous and creative and innovative. If you're a web designer, maybe. But in general, for portfolio, the highest purpose you can go for is it is simple, easy and extremely functional. The more the design can get out of the way of your work, the better. Using a really basic template and it's extremely easy to browse, the image are better. Because think of it as the art director. They are often busy, stressed, have too much to do and are they going to want to look through the website that is making it extremely difficult for them. Nope. So try to make their lives easier and have extremely simple functional website. Leave the creativity for your art. Let the design be functional. Now there are two things you need to have on your site. There are only two things, that's it. You don't need anything else. One, you need your work to show. And secondly, you need to have your contact info. And both of these need to be easy to find, easy to see. And you need one every single page have your contact info. On every single page, uh, say it again, Every single page need to have your contact info. If your email is not on every single page of your website, you're kind of messing up here. Directors are often extremely busy people and if you can save a couple minutes looking for your contact info, you're going to make them a lot happier. With that, we have wrapped up part one. Next part will be only on my Patreon page, where we're gonna talk more about breaking in, about marketing and so on. As well, I will begin exterior visualization series, so if you're interested in it, welcome aboard. Thanks for watching, see you next time.